You know, even if you've never overclocked before, chances are you know what it means. And there's no one doubting that the higher your clock speeds are, the better and faster your system will perform. Or there wouldn't be things like competitive overclocking where people are using liquid helium in order to get the highest possible clock speeds. But what does that mean for you in real life? Is there really much to gain from overclocking your CPU? Will you get, you know, higher frame rates or faster productivity times? Or is, are you really just spending a lot of time and effort for really no gain? Not to mention the risk involved in overclocking a CPU. Well, that's kind of what I wanted to find out. So I took my system and I set it at four, four and a half and five gigahertz. And then I ran the same gaming tests and productivity tests to kind of see how it all measured out. Do we gain anything by overclocking or are we just happy to look at that five gigahertz number on the screen? Let's find out if overclocking is something you should consider doing or if it's just not worth the risk. So given that I edit a lot of videos, one of the first tests that I wanted to run was a render test. I wanted to see how clock speed affected render time. So from left to right, I have four gigahertz. 4.5 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz and what I did was I set up some test footage so I have a five minute clip and I rendered it out at the same settings at each clock speed and I timed it from start to finish and this is how it did. 4 gigahertz did it in 9 minutes and 7 seconds, 4.5 gigahertz did it in 8 minutes and 4 seconds and 5 gigahertz did it in 7 minutes and 22 seconds. So as you expect the higher your clock speed the faster your render times. Now not everybody renders video, so I want another test that was more workstation-y that people might be more familiar with. So what I did was I took those same video files I used in my render test and I zipped them all together. So from top to bottom we have 4, 4.5 four and, and 5 gigahertz. And I took all the files, zipped them together and started a timer and this is how they finished. 4 gigahertz did it in 1 minute and 41 seconds, 4.5 gigahertz did it in 1 minute and 27 seconds, and 5 gigahertz did it in 1 minute and 21 seconds. So again, on this one, the higher your clock speed, the faster your processor can compress all the files. So now it was time to test gaming performance. So I jumped into Overwatch and set my presets to Epic and I jumped into the training range. And I chose to do the training range because it was easier to control all the other variables. I could do the same run at each frequency and kind of see how both were performing. So four gigahertz in the training range, I got an average FPS of 77. At five gigahertz, an average FPS of 77. With a higher max, I guess, but you're going to notice that I'm only showing 4 and 5 gigahertz, and that's for a reason. Even in the other game I tested, uh, I started to notice a trend between the frequency changes. So after seeing this lack of performance increase, I decided to set all my graphical settings to the lowest possible setting to avoid any possibility of a GPU bottleneck. And uh, I ran the same exact path again, or at least tried to, and at 4 gigahertz, I saw an average frame rate of 190 FPS, and at 5 gigahertz, I saw an average frame rate of 191 FPS. And then again, I saw slightly higher max frame rates from the higher clock speed, but all in all, it was almost the same. So after seeing those results, I wanted to run a game that was a little bit more demanding than Overwatch. So I loaded up Battlefield 5, and this is what I found out. So I went into the practice range again to run the same route and ran the game at both low and ultra presets and at four and five gigahertz. So from top to bottom, left to right, we have the results. On low presets, four gigahertz, we have an average frame rate of 122 FPS. At five gigahertz on low presets, we have an average frame rate of 122 FPS, as in this time, the max frame rates leveled out about the same. On ultra presets at four gigahertz, we have an average frame rate of 85 FPS. And at five gigahertz on ultra, we have an average frame rate of 84 FPS. And this time, again, the max frame rates were pretty much the same. So this kind of shows you that although we are overclocking the CPU, this games, these games are more bound to our GPU's performance than our CPU performance. So after running all those tests, seeing all those scores, what are my thoughts on overclocking? Is it something that's worth your time and effort or is it simply just not worth the risk? It really depends on what you plan on doing. So for example, if I was gonna build a new PC that its sole purpose was gaming, that was the whole idea behind the build, then I probably wouldn't overclock at least my CPU. I would look for a CPU that wasn't unlocked and a board that didn't support overclocking. And the reason I would do that is because those two components are normally cheaper in that configuration. And that money that you save, you can put towards a better GPU, which is gonna get you a better gaming performance. The fact of the matter is that most games are not CPU bound. Obviously, some games use more CPU resources than others, but if you have a modern CPU, you're really not gonna notice that much of an FPS bump by doing any overclocking. You're gonna have a much better experience by having a higher end graphics card or even doing some GPU overclocking. Now, if you're somebody like myself who does both video editing and gaming, then overclocking, at least to me, is definitely worth it. For that performance boost you get by doing a simple overclock, especially in things like rendering, uh, it really helps out a lot when you can drop your render times by up to a minute based on how long your videos are by just putting a simple overclock in. Now, there is risk involved when overclocking a CPU. I mean, I've run my 6700K at five gigahertz for almost a year and haven't had any issues. 
And before that, I ran a 2500K at 4.5 gigahertz for many, many, many years and never had any issues either. But that's not to say that everybody doesn't have any problems. I'm sure there's many out there that have stories of how they've burned up CPUs in the past because of an overclock. For me, I've been lucky and haven't experienced that, but not every chip is created equal. But as long as you're responsible on your voltages and you monitor your temperatures and you have a good cooling solution, you should be all right when doing overclocking. So thank you again for watching. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you like this video. And remember, you know, hit that little watermark, get subscribed, check out all my other videos, stick around to see what comes out next. Join the major hardware community. We'd love to have you. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you in the next one.